Assalamu alaikum everyone. This is your teacher Muhammad Usama Yaseen and we are going to study the first chapter of your computer book. Uh, the, the name of this chapter is more about computers. Uh, our main object objectives will be to learn the types of computer, peripheral devices and the memory of computer. You may have heard about the types of computers. We will discuss about each and every one of them in detail. Let's take a look at some of them. Supercomputers, mainframes, mini computers, microcomputers, and variable computers. Supercomputers, as the name suggests, they are biggest in size. They are also the fastest because they can process trillions of instructions per second and they are the most expensive computers because with that much processing power there will be a greater cost and you have to understand that. Weather forecasting, aircraft designing, defense related work, these are some of the areas where we use supercomputers. Weather forecasting involves a lot of data. You know there are many, many countries in the world and they have too many cities, towns and other areas. There is too much data and to process this much of data about weather, uh, they need a lot of processing power which can only be provided by a supercomputer. As for aircraft designing, they run a lot of simulations after adding each and every feature they run those simulation to see if there is a margin of error so they correct it defense related work involves missile guidance systems radar systems nuclear power plants etc an example of a supercomputer is ibm's advanced strategic computing initiative white or ascii white for short Mainframes. Mainframes can carry out a number of tasks. They can execute billions of instructions per second for many people at the same time. They are mostly used in big hospitals, airlines, and banks. An example of mainframes is IBM Z10. Now let me help you understand what that means. To execute billions of instructions per second for many people at the same time. As I have said before, they are used in banks as well. So what if I were to use uh, network banking for, for example, I'm using Bank of Punjab. So I'm using their application on my Android phone. I'm accessing their servers. Someone else is using an ATM machine. They are also using their services. So when you have, have to provide so many people these services, you need a lot of power, but not as much as a supercomputer. Mainframes will suffice. Just like that, those hospitals, they share data with other branches. For example, Shogat Khanam Labs. They send the data to their branches and they send the data to their head office. That's where the servers are and they keep the record of it. See, so many people access their data, some patients data, some employees check in, check out times and other types of records and airlines. It, it is different from aircraft designing though. Aircraft designing is on another level. Like I said, that is the designing procedure that uh, requires a lot of simulation. So a supercomputer does that. Here we are talking about airline operations, just like banks. There are airline operations. 
uh, how many flights are leaving how many flights are arriving what is their time again records about employees and other types of stuff mini computers mini computers are used as servers in the networks because a server is a computer or a series of computers that links other computers or electronic devices together a couple of examples of servers are IBM's AS-400 HP's HP 3000 a server has to be a little bit more powerful or significantly more powerful than the other computers in the network because it has to provide other computers which are known as the clients with a few services you have heard about Facebook right you have been using it probably so Facebook has servers throughout the world we access our account information on one of those servers when we log into our Facebook account it takes us to the server of the company where we access the data and like us other people are also using Facebook when they access their accounts they are also taken to a server where they access their data so that server or a series of computers they are providing others with facilities that's why they have to be a bit more powerful than the computers that are trying to access them a microcomputer is a complete computer but it is much smaller than a mainframe or a mini computer also known as personal computer you see them in households shops offices almost everywhere a few of their examples are desktop laptops PDA uh, which stands for personal digital assistance let's look at these types desktop this PC is kept in one place it is not very mobile because of its size and it requires separate input and outputs they are not built into one unit you you can upgrade them for sure but its size uh, restricts you and the power requirement and all that things that's why it is kept in one location and it is not portable then there are laptops now these computers they are portable and current laptops have a lot of power in them but they cost more than the desktops uh, they do have few benefits they have rechargeable batteries and some of the laptops even support more than one batteries there is a primary battery and then you can add a secondary battery for extended time personal digital assistant PDA a PDA or a palm top is a small handheld computer so you have to know that this is just a smaller computer it will perform almost everything your laptop can and I say almost because some of the tasks cannot be handled by PDA it has a touch screen or physical buttons for input and PDAs are used as mobile phones, smartphones, as web browsers, and to run multimedia applications. Uh, th there's one key point. A lot of students get confused between microcomputers and mini computers. You have to understand a little bit of concept here. Know the meaning of micro and mini computers first what is a micro what is mini you have been studying your uh, uh, science books which tell you about microorganisms which you have to observe via microscopes so you have to know that microorganisms are the smallest so in our case 
microcomputers are the smallest types of computers. We are using it in, uh, them in our households. Mini computers are bigger as compared to the microcomputers. So what we are using in our homes, the smallest computers, the smallest computers are micro, not mini. Because micro is smaller than mini. You have to understand this concept and you will never forget again. Wearable computers are worn on the body. Their main features are consistency and multitasking. An example is smartwatch. There is a constant interaction between the computer and the user. That means you don't have to stop what you're doing to use this device. Your, compu your computer, in, in this case, your phone is your computer and it is interacting with your smartwatch. You don't have to turn on your uh, phone to see any of the alerts. They will be delivered to the smartwatch. It will either beep or uh, use some other form of alert like vibration feature. And you can see that alert right on your smartwatch or the time or some other thing. Check your progress. I have provided you with the answers of this section. But let me try and help you understand that. Which type of computer would be used in the following situations? One, Mrs. Anwar is a housewife. She needs a computer to store her recipes and household accounts. For her, a desktop or a laptop computer would suffice because she doesn't need a lot of processing power. She only needs to store a few recipes and household accounts. Two, Mr. Zavar is a businessman and travels from one place to another. So he's a businessman and he travels from one place to another. So it is not feasible for him to carry a desktop with him. That's why a laptop computer will be better for him. Anam is a nuclear scientist. She uses a computer that can perform comp complex mathematical calculations very fast. Complex mathematical calculations and she is a nuclear scientist. So I'll say supercomputer because she needs a lot of processing power. And they do use supercomputers in nuclear power plants. Afan does not want to carry a computer to college, but wants to put one on his body. And we know that we put smart smartwatch or wearable computers on our body. Smartwatch is a specific type of computer, specific type of wearable computer. Wearable computer is an umbrella term, which may include other types of computers. So a phone will need a smartwatch. Peripheral devices. A computer operates by accepting some form of data from an input device. Then the processing occurs and that data is turned into some useful information and it is displayed by output device. Those input and output devices connected to a computer are called peripheral devices. They include keyboard, which we use for typing, mouse, we use it to control the mouse pointer on our computers, joystick or joypad, which are used for gaming purposes, trackball, which is a different type of mouse. Some people use them for ergonomics purposes. Some people are used to them, but they are less common than normal mouse. Touchpad which also serves as a mouse and they are most commonly present on the laptops and in some keyboards as well. Touch screen which are commonly found in your cell phones, uh, less commonly in your laptops and in some rare cases they are also present in your TVs. Then there is a light or digital pen which is used by artists to create uh, their are their animations and so on microphone is used to record the sound 
scanner is used to uh, scan the documents and uh, create a digital copy in the computer printer takes the information from the computer and prints it on a physical paper speakers are used to listen to the sound input devices optical mark reader OMR OMR throws light on a specially designed form which has circles or boxes on it what user does is to fill those boxes or circles with a dark pencil or an ink and OMR recognizes the light reflected by the darkened and undarkened places it recognizes which of those circles are dark and which of those circles are not dark after that the information is passed on to the computer and the computer analyzes which of those circles or boxes are darkened you have seen your bubble sheets right where you have to answer by filling the circle with an ink in actuality those sheets should be checked by an OMR device and multiple choice question answer sheet for engineering and medical courses are commonly checked by OMR technology magnetic ink character reader MICR take out your checkbook try to examine a check you will find some interesting characters printed on the bottom of a check there is a special attribute to them because they are printed in magnetic ink that is not a normal ink that is magnetic ink and that is scanned by MICR MICR reads these characters and this information is sent to the computer use of this technology is to mainly sort or classify these checks on the basis of their branch like which series belong to which branch and there is a security related feature to it as well with this technology you can see if there had been any tampering with the checks if somebody had been trying to create fake checks you can prevent that by using magnetic ink character reader barcode reader this is a very common device these days you have barcode on almost everything you buy uh, for example try to look under your air conditioner you'll see a barcode try to look behind your TV you'll see a barcode now turn your gaming console upside down and you'll see there's probably a barcode in there even in your game controllers there are barcodes which will tell you some in some sort of information about that uh, item about that product they're commonly used in shopping malls uh, where you just give them the item they scan it uh, the code the barcode with a barcode reader and it quickly gives them the information about the price and other features of that product or devices a barcode is a group of vertical lines or bars and they contain the information about that product process is very simple the barcode reader sends that information to a computer computer processes it very quickly and shows the details on the monitor screen like what is the price what is the feature etc barcode reader is also called a price scanner or point of sale scanner POS stands for point of sale digital camera back in the day we used traditional cameras which used photographic films and to develop a photographic film we needed a dark room and the time period well 
it could take around a day or a day and a half. Now digital camera, it stores the photographs electronically, not on a photographic film, which makes it quick and inexpensive. You take your shot. If you like it, you can keep it. If you don't, you delete it and try again right there and then. After that, these photographs can be edited in your computer to adjust the colors, to adjust the saturation and other of such things. You can use Adobe Photoshop for that or any other program. There are many choices. Hence, digital cameras are very popular because they are easy to use. After you take these pictures, these can be sent to your computer and you can print them using a special paper and inkjet or a laser printer, which, are, which is not very expensive. There are many printer models inkjet printer models and laser printer models in the market which are inexpensive. Output devices plotter. A plotter is used to produce high quality and accurate drawings. It draws continuous lines using a pen. It is used for computer aided design and computer aided manufacture applications such as printing out plans for buildings bridges and parts of automobiles they are also expensive as compared to the printers the main reason for using a plotter is to be precise when we print out plans for buildings bridges or designing the parts of automobiles we have to be precise we cannot leave the room for error there because one small flaw and a fatal accident may occur. So, to stay on the safe side and to print out the fine details, we use plotter. This printer cannot handle that sort of information. It can do a well enough job, but not as well as a plotter can. Common types of plotters are drum plotters, flatbed plotters, and inkjet plotters. Liquid Crystal Display Projector LCD Projector What this does is projects an image on a large screen. You can use a blank wall for this purpose. You place the device in front of the wall, you position it correctly and it forms a picture on the wall on a large blank screen. It is an alternative to a monitor but very expensive when you compare it to the monitor. Uh, the common use for LCD projectors uh, is to show PowerPoint presentations during office meetings or in the classrooms in universities. Why don't we lose all of our documents once we shut down our computer? That's because it is used in a component of a computer which is called memory. However, we will lose our information if we have not saved it on the memory. Once we shut down the system, it will be gone for good. A computer can store huge amounts of data, and this information can be retrieved instantly and used. Memory of a computer can be classified into two types, primary memory and the secondary memory primary memory primary memory contains the data that can be directly accessed by the CPU and that data is essential like the instructions to turn on the system instructions to initialize devices to start the operating system that is held in the primary memory. Primary memory further has two types, RAM and ROM. RAM stands for Random Accessed Memory. 
RAM is insanely fast as compared to other types of memories. But RAM is temporary and volatile in nature, which means you will lose the data once you shut down your computer. It won't stay in the RAM. It will be gone for good. ROM. ROM stands for read-only memory. It is permanent, non-volatile, which means once you shut down your system, the data won't go anywhere. It will stay right where it is. But you can only read contents from the ROM. You cannot write anything on it. And the reason for this is because ROM contains the instructions, vital instructions, such as to start the operating system. That's why this mechanism has been designed, that you can read something from the ROM, but you cannot just make any change to it. Secondary memory. This type of memory cannot be directly accessed by the CPU and data which is not needed frequently is stored in the secondary memory. The normal mode of operation is that the data present in secondary memory is first passed to the primary memory where it can be accessed by the CPU. The reason is that primary memory can only hold the essential data and the data stored in the secondary memory is not uh, frequently needed by the system. When it is needed, it is fast. When it is not, it is kept in the secondary memory. We have games, we have movies, we have our documents and other personal details in the secondary memory. They are not essential for the system to boot up or perform their operations. That's why it is not always loaded in the primary memory. There are common storage mediums and they include hard disks, internal or external, that doesn't matter. Floppy disks, which are obsolete now, CD-ROM, DVD, Blu-ray disk, SD card, pen drive, etc. Floppy disks, uh, they, they were very unreliable. They could break down easily. They also had very little capacity. A 3.5 inch floppy disks could only hold 1.44 MB of data. A compact disk could store data around 700 megabytes. A digital versatile disk DVD can store because it is still being used not that frequently but still being used so it can store from 4 to 8 GB of data 8.5 around that then there is a pen drive which is very common these days you know it by USB drive USB flash drive USB pen drive or USB thumb drive and this is a very common storage medium and this serves great uh, purpose in portability. Hard drives, they range from 500 GB up to 8 terabytes, whichever size we require, even less. Let's try to understand the unit of the memory. There is an easier way to remember all of this because this looks very intimidating at the first glance. But let me share this method with you. Fairly straightforward. Just remember, remember the smallest unit and then work your way to the biggest one. The smallest in this case is byte. So we'll work from the bytes. 1024 bytes will make one kilobyte because kilobyte is bigger than bytes so 1024 bytes is equal to one kilobyte what is bigger than a kilobyte a megabyte so 
if we want to create a megabyte we will have to take 1024 kilobytes and then it will form one megabyte what is bigger than a megabyte gigabyte so we will need 1024 megabytes that then we will have one gigabyte and what is bigger than gigabyte a terabyte so we will need 1024 gigabytes to form one terabyte to summarize 1024 bytes will form kilobyte 1 kilobyte and 1024 kilobytes will form 1 megabyte 1024 megabytes will form 1 gigabyte 1024 gigabytes will form 1 terabyte so the hierarchy will be bytes then kilobytes then megabytes then gigabytes and then terabytes just remember this order and you won't have any difficulty converting them that's all for now good luck